He hated it. All the trucks were laughing and singing at him. Trucks are waiting in the yard, packing them with diesel. Show the world what I can do, gaily boast the diesel. In and out he creeps about, like a big black weasel. When he pulls the wrong trucks out, pop goes the diesel. Arrgh! Growled diesel and scuttled away to sulk in the shed. Diesel, the new engine, was sulking. The trucks would not stop singing rudely at him. Duck was horrified. Shut up, he ordered and bumped them hard. I'm sorry our trucks were rude to you, Diesel. Diesel hated Duck. He wanted him to be sent away, so he made a plan. He was going to tell lies about Duck. Next day, he spoke to the trucks. I see you like jokes. You made a good joke about me yesterday. I laughed and laughed. Duck tell me one about Gordon. I'll whisper it. Don't tell Gordon I told you. And he sniggered away. Oh, ho, ho, guffered the trucks. Gordon will be cross with Duck when he knows. Let's tell him and pay Duck out for bumping us. They laughed rudely at the engines as they went by. The trucks had been cheeky and troublesome. He wanted a rest in the shed. Hurrah, 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 laughed the trucks. We've broken away, we've broken away. Chase him, bump him, throw him off the rails, they yelled. Hurry, duck, hurry, said the driver. They raced through Edwards Station, but the trucks were catching up as fast as we can. Then they'll catch us gradually. The driver was gaining control. Another clear mile and we'll do it. Oh, glory, look at that. James was just pulling out on their line from the station ahead. Any minute there could be a crash. It's up to you now, Duck, cried the driver. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the trucks. It's too late, Duck groaned and shut his eyes. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. He was shaving a customer. The silly trucks had knocked their guard off his van and left him far behind after he had whistled a warning. But the trucks didn't care. They were feeling very pleased with themselves. There was a brake van in the yard that had taken a dislike to Douglas. Things always went wrong when he had to take it out. His trains were late and he was blamed. Douglas began to worry. Donald, his twin, was angry. You're a muckle nuisance, said Donald. It's to leave you behind I'd be wanting. You can't, said the van. I'm essential. Oh, can you? Donald burst out. You're nothing but a screeching and a noise when all's said and done. Spite Dougie, would you? Take that. Oh, 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 cried the van. There's more coming, should you misbehave. The van behaved better after that. But James was losing steam. I can't do it. I can't do it. Lay it to me, shouted Douglas. The guard was anxious. Go steady. The van's breaking. The van was in pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Edward came to clear the mess. The fat controller was on board. I might have known it would be Douglas, he said. He began ordering the trucks about. Hurry along, he said. The trucks grumbled to each other. This is Toby's place. Percy's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They whispered and passed the word. Pay Percy out. Pay Percy out. Come along, Puff Percy. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the trucks. 
but they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were under control. At the big station, the trucks laughed at him. Gordon tried to wish them away, but they crowded round no matter what he did. Can you keep a secret? she asked the trucks. Yes, 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 they chattered. Will you bump me at the level crossing and tell no one I asked you? The trucks promised. But whilst Mavis was away, Toby arrived. He decided to shunt the trucks himself. The trucks decided to bump him anyway. They reached the level crossing and Toby's brakes came on. This was the signal for the trucks. On, 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 they yelled. Toby was away with the trucks screaming and yelling behind him. No one realised that melted snow had turned a stream into a torrent and the bridge above it was about to collapse. The rails were now like a tightrope across the thundering water. Stop! Stop! cried Toby. His driver fought for control. They came nearer and nearer to the bridge. The driver braked hard. Toby stopped, still on the rails. Then he came back to take the loaded trucks away. They were comfortable and didn't want to move. What right has he to poke his funnel in here, they grumbled. We want Duck or Donald or Douglas. Look sharp, puffed Oliver. That's not the way to speak, hissed the trucks. We'll pay him out. Oliver heard nothing. The trucks moved smoothly at first, then suddenly Oliver felt them push forward. His driver applied the brakes, but they were useless against the surging trucks. On, 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 yelled the trucks. Oliver fought hard, but still they forced him on and on. At last, the trucks grew tired. I'm winning, gasped Oliver. But it was too late. Afraid they didn't laugh. No need for that, shouted the trucks as the twins pushed them into place. We'll show you around. We want to help. Thank you very much, said Bill and Ben. The trucks giggled and began their tricks. Evening came. The yard was in a dreadful muddle. The twins had let the trucks tell them where to put things. Even so, Sir Handel wouldn't stop grumbling. The trucks didn't like Sir Handel and wanted to play tricks on him. No one understands our feelings, sympathised Gordon. Now, if you were ill, you couldn't shun trucks, could you? Good idea, replied Sir Handel. I'll try it. He did so next morning. I don't feel well, he groaned. There wasn't time to examine him, so some of his trucks were coupled behind Peter Sam's coaches. Peter Sam duly waited at the bottom of the slope for the loaded trucks. He never bumped trucks unless they misbehaved, but the loaded trucks couldn't see him properly. They thought he was a handle. The chance for trickery had come. Faster! Faster, they yelled. No, no, wailed the empty trucks. It's Peter Sam. But it was no use. Hurrah, hurrah, roared the trucks. Peter Sam shut his eyes. The trucks sang songs, rude and loud. Scruffy, their leader, led the chorus. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he very clever, says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. When the yard is up so bad, when the great is falling, we just push him down the well. Top goes on Dolly. 
Thomas, Duck and Percy were shot. Be quiet, they ordered. But they couldn't be everywhere, and everywhere they weren't, the trucks began again. Oh, there's no use at all. Thinks he's very clever. Says that he can manage us. That's the best joke ever. Oliver marshalled the worst trucks two by two. That's the way, Mr. Oliver, whispered Toad. And if you leave that scruffy to last, you'll have him behind you. Then you can bump him if he starts his nonsense. Hold back, hold back, whispered Scruffy, and passed the word to the others. The silly trucks giggled. But Oliver knew what to do. There was plenty of sand on the rails and his wheels gripped splendidly. He gave a great heave. Oh, groaned Scruffy. I don't like this. Go it, yelled Doc. Well done, boy, well done. Oh, well, Scruffy. Oh, I'm coming apart. And he did. Then there was trouble. Well, Oliver, so you don't know your own strength, is that it? No, no, sir, said Oliver nervously. The fat controller inspected Scruffy. Has a thought. Rotten wood, rusty frames. Maybe if we put you back together, you'll earn yourself a better name. Nowadays, Oliver only takes the trucks when the other engines are busy. But they are always quick to warn each other. Take care with Mr. Oliver. If you play tricks on him, you'll never be the same truck again. Scruffy has learned his lesson and says, Nothing at all. Today the barge was more bad-tempered than ever. Come on, come on, why aren't you trucks where you should be? There's no engine and we can only go where we're put, shouted the trucks. You're in the wrong place, not us. When Percy arrived, Bullstrode was sulking and the trucks were crosser still. Our stone is for Bullstrode. Please! Put us in a siding so that we can load him up and be rid of him. But the trucks were being careless. As Percy was lining them up, they burst through some buffers. Help! Help! They wailed. But it was too late. Oof, cried Bullstrode. I'm sinking! Serves you right, giggled the trucks. You were always barging in and moaning. It took a very long time to clear the mess. The weather had changed for the worse. Your colour's nice, James. Pity about your face, though, said a truck. <laughs> James ignored them and set off. Some empty trucks. Who's this dirty little engine? cried the trucks. We want Thomas or Duck. Percy ignored them. Put upon, put upon, that's what I am. Next morning, he took some trucks to the coal yards. Then he had to push empty trucks to the mine shaft. When he arrived, there was trouble. The foreman spoke to his driver. The trucks are stuck on the mechanism. All they need is a good shove. We'll do it right away. Percy shunted back to where a large canvas barrier was used to protect his line from loose rocks. Percy charged at the line of trucks, too fast and too hard. Oh, no! gasped Percy. The trucks broke free, but ran out of control to the mines below. On, on, faster, faster, the silly trucks yelled. Then 
there was trouble again. Oh, look! Henry's spooked, said a truck, and the others giggled in their silly way. Be quiet, snapped Henry. I'm not scared. But he was. A little later, the fog came down. As they approached the same area, they saw the amber light again. Here we go, said Henry's driver. Then, unbeknown to Henry, the gates mysteriously closed by themselves, and the signal went red. The trucks had seen all, and they were spooked too. Faster, faster, there's a ghost about. Stop, stop, yelled Henry. A mysterious figure watched Henry go by. Ahead was a landslide blocking the line. Henry braked hard, but the trucks hit some of the rubble and plunged into the ravine. Oliver just grew unhappier, and he was rough with the trucks. You're no good, Oliver. You're dangerous. We want Percy. Pa, Percy's far too busy to be bothered with the likes of you, and he bumped the trucks hard. Percy puffed back to the coal mines. When he arrived, the truck started teasing him. Percy, Percy, green and small, he's no use to us at all. Around the yards he'll puff and blow, but on the hills he's oh so slow. Be quiet! Then he took the trucks to the coal hopper to be loaded up. The trucks were still grumbling, and there was more of them than ever. You're much too small to pull all of us. We want another engine or we'll be struggling up the hill all night. All nice, all right, you can puff and blow, but on that hill you're still too slow. S -s -s slow yourself, stuttered Percy. Temper, temper, giggled the trucks. Percy decided just to carry on. Go to it, Percy, shouted the driver as they started to climb the hill. The trucks were still joking. Too slow. More power. Here all night. Tomorrow too. Be quiet, said Percy angrily. Then there was trouble. A coupling broke. Surprise, surprise. Catch us if you can. You're a very useful brake van, Toad. You help me brake and you keep my trucks in order when we go down hills. I know, Mr. Oliver, but it would be so exciting to go forwards for a change instead of always seeing things sliding away from me. The trucks were cross with Toad. Who's he to start complaining? He's lucky to be able to look after us. Let's teach him a lesson. When they were nearly at the top, they played their tricks. Ready, steady, go, said the trucks, and they jerked at a coupling which broke. We're making your wish come true, Toad. Follow the leader, yelled the trucks. Toad was still in a state of shock, so didn't know what to think, and he couldn't ask the guard. He had jumped clear. As fast as you want, screamed the trucks. Suddenly, Toad found it all rather fun, but the fun was soon over. A crossing lay ahead and the gates were closed. Toad couldn't stop. Worse still, Toad now realised he was on the wrong track. There ahead was Gordon. The signalman changed the points just in time. On! On! Faster! cried the trucks. Suddenly he saw James pulling a long, slow train. Yikes! Help! Save me! A quick-thinking shunter did just in time. What was that? exclaimed James. 
The signalman warned the station master at the next station. There's a runaway coming. We'll send them into the sidings. Help! Help! Called Toad again. Toad saw some buffers. Those will stop me. But the points of the buffers weren't set. Oh no! I'm back on the main line. Meanwhile, Oliver was racing to the rescue. I must catch Toad, I must. Toad sped past Henry. More danger lay ahead. Men were working on a bridge, but they had been warned about the runaway Toad and his trucks. They diverted him onto old sidings, straight into a muddy pool. One day, Rusty helped Peter Sam to a water tower. And once there, whistled goodbye. Peter Sam felt much better after his long drink, but the trucks were bored. Let's break away, they giggled. Their loads were heavy and the couplings old. One snap. Faster, faster, shouted the trucks. A sign read, slow, steep bends and ravine ahead, but the silly trucks never saw it. Then it was too late. Peter Sam arrived at the scene of the disaster. His driver sighed. This was our fault. We didn't secure them properly. We'll have to get help to pull them out. But high above them, all was not well. A long line of full trucks was about to be winched down the slope. They had just started their journey when some empty trucks became derailed. The winch groaned. Break it! Snap it! shouted the trucks. And they did. On, on, on! Faster, faster! they giggled. The snowbank and buffers will stop him, said a workman. But he was wrong. The trucks plunged into the ravine. Scarlowe and his driver heard the noise and looked up. Avalanche! they cried. When the snow plume cleared, there was no sign of Scarlowe. He was buried deep inside the high drift. Trucks seemed to give Salty no trouble at all. Yawns. Yo ho ho, and a bucket of prawns, a tiller spin, sang Salty. And the captain yawns, sang the trucks. Out on the branch line, Percy was having trouble with trucks. Faster we go, faster we go, pull him along, don't let him slow. Help! cried Percy. His driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. He went off the rails at Bulgy's Bridge. Luckily, no one was hurt. Bertie arrived and was pleased Percy was all right, but he was also very cross. You've blocked the road, Bertie snapped. The next day, Diesel was working at the docks. When the flat controller sees how good I am, he bragged to the trucks, he'll get rid of steam engines once and for all. This gave the troublesome trucks an idea. As Diesel shunted them together, they started to sing. Is that all you can haul? Henry's loads are longer. Is that all you can haul? Henry must be stronger. Diesel was cross. He was sure that he was stronger than Henry. I'll push you all at the same time, he said. The trucks giggled. Push us all, that's the longest. Push us all, you'll be the strongest. That's me, said Diesel. The world's strongest engine. And Diesel shunted five trucks together. Then ten. Then fifteen. Soon he had an enormous line of twenty trucks. 
What's Diesel doing? cried Percy. He thinks he's the world's strongest engine, replied Thomas. Diesel didn't know the shunters had set the brakes on the trucks. The troublesome trucks knew, but encouraged Diesel to push anyway. Push, push, push! Diesel pushed, and he pushed, and he pushed! But the trucks didn't move, so Diesel decided to pull the trucks instead. Heave ho, heave ho, you can pull but we won't go, sang the trucks. This made Diesel very cross. He pulled, and he pulled, and he pulled, and he pulled. Help! Percy was loading trucks at the docks. He was trying extra hard to stay clean, but the troublesome trucks were being naughty. As Percy pushed them under the coal chute, they sang out. On, 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 they cried. Percy found himself under the chute, and coal dust flew everywhere. Oh, no, coughed Percy. I'm filthy. Percy felt awful, but he knew he had to carry on. On the way to Callan Station, the troublesome trucks teased Percy even more. Clickety-clack! Don't look back! Dirty Percy's on our track! Be quiet! Percy snapped. Bill tried his best to get on with his work, but the troublesome trucks had spotted a chance for a tease. Poor, poor Bill! He works, he suffers while Benny's twin gets brand new buffers! <laughs> This made Bill very cross. I might not have new buffers, he said, but I still know how to biff a truck. No, Mavis cried. But it was too late. But Duck was not happy. The trucks were playing their silly games. Duck should play with other ducks, cause he's no good at pulling trucks. Quack, 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 hold back, hold back, they giggled. Duck found himself going slower and slower and slower. Halfway up Gordon's Hill, his wheels stopped altogether. Duck was stuck. Thomas and Percy were bumping trucks. They knew this was naughty, but they were having fun. Join in, Arthur, said Thomas. No, thank you, wish the new engine. He'd never been naughty before. Arthur's first job was to push a trainload of fruit to market. The truck started to sing. A root to toe, we want to go. The fruit's going off, cause you're too slow. How rude, huffed Arthur. This gave Thomas a naughty idea. The fat controller doesn't like the truck singing, said Thomas. You must stop them. Thank you, said Arthur. I will. Arthur was glad he could keep the trucks in order. He'll never stop the trucks from singing, laughed Thomas. Arthur chuffed cheerfully through the countryside. Soon, the trucks started singing again. Chug, chug, chuff, you tug and huff, but you're so rusty you can't even puff. Stop singing, huffed Arthur. Trucks should do as they're told. The troublesome trucks were cross. If they couldn't sing, they would teach Arthur a lesson instead. We'll show him, they giggled. He can't push us around. Arthur struggled over bridges. And he huffed and puffed through tunnels. He came over the top of a big hill. You can't catch us, laughed the trucks. Weesh! But there was trouble ahead. Duck had stopped at the crossing at the bottom of the hill. Arthur's driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. Squashed fruit flew everywhere. Arthur was upset. His spotless record was ruined. The trucks were being very naughty. 
poor Percy was almost worn out. James puffed along looking forward to being seen, but the trucks were naughtier than ever. They rocked and rolled and crashed and bashed. James's face was soon covered in soot. Going downhill, the trucks wiggled and giggled. James had to put his brakes on with a jolt. Coal tumbled out of the trucks, landing on James. James was cross and biffed the trucks as hard as he could. More coal flew out. Now James didn't want to be seen. He was as dirty as he had ever been. At the flour mill, the flour had been loaded into the trucks. Emily was coupled up. Then she puffed across the countryside to Knapford Station. But the troublesome trucks saw a chance for mischief. Hold back, hold back! They screeched. Emily pulled as hard as she could. But the trucks made her go very slowly. Trucks tricked her again. Off we go, off we go, they chuckled. But they weren't coupled up properly. Mustn't be late, mustn't be late, they giggled. So Emily puffed quickly away. But only half of the trucks went with her. When Emily arrived at the mill, the trucks were more troublesome than ever. Emily the late engine, Emily the late engine, they sang. This made Emily very cross, and she biffed them very hard. Oh no, they cried, and splashed into the duck pond. The trucks wiggled, and they giggled. They made Thomas's journey very bumpy. Some of the fish were shaken loose. Yuck! Thomas gasped. I wish I'd have taken fewer trucks. Thomas puffed hard. He pushed the long line of trucks up the hill. He started to puff down the other side. Thomas tried to go slowly, but the trucks wanted to go faster. On, 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 they cheered. Thomas went faster and faster. Cinders and ashes, Thomas cried. Salty was at the bottom of the hill. He was waiting for a signal. He didn't know Thomas was coming down the hill. Thomas was out of control. Thomas braked as hard as he could. But the fish trucks were too heavy. Oops, said Thomas. Sorry. Salty was covered in fish. Never mind me, Artie, said Salty. The smell reminds me of the sea. The troublesome trucks started to moan and groan. They clattered and chattered. Percy knew they were going to be trouble. Take these trucks along my track, said Emily. It's faster and the trucks won't complain. Toby will be pleased when he sees how quick you are. Percy wanted Toby to be pleased. I'll do as you say, Queen Emily, he tooted. Emily was pleased with herself. She watched as Percy blew a big wish of steam. Percy puffed and he chuffed, and the troublesome trucks sped off. Emily let out a wish of steam. She did know best. But suddenly there was a terrible noise. As the dust cleared, Emily saw what had happened. The trucks had run into Mavis. Thomas backed under the hopper. But just as the stone was released, Thomas's trucks chuckled. Then they rolled a bit more. Bother! Huffed Thomas. Ha! Puffed James. 
Your trucks don't look so new now. Thomas was cross. Thomas puffed to the coaling plant. This time, behave yourselves. Thomas snapped to his trucks. I want you to stay clean. When he arrived, Thomas backed carefully and slowly under the coal hopper. But the trucks chuckled, then rolled too far again. Thomas and his trucks were dirtier than ever. Trucks would rather be useful than clean. Just then, James puffed into the docks. Look at your trucks, boasted James. Filthy again, not like mine. James tried to pull away, but his troublesome trucks didn't want to be clean anymore. Hold back, hold back, they chuckled. Just then, Cranky's cable snapped. He dropped a large craze of melons. Bother, huffed James. James, tutored Thomas. I think trucks like to be useful rather than clean. And all the trucks agreed. And no one said hello to him. The troublesome trucks saw a chance for mischief. They wiggled and giggled and biffed Scarlowy. On, on, they cried. Then some pipes dropped from a crane and landed with a clang. Scarlowy jumped. His trucks hit the buffers and bright white flour flew everywhere. Scare the engine, scare the engine, sang the trucks. Clickety-clack, don't come back, ha, 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 ha. Later, Thomas chuffed into the coaling plant. And there was Hector. The other trucks giggled and laughed. Big, bad, strong and solid, that truck's name is Hector Horrid, they sang. Thomas puffed closer. Keep away, roared Hector. Bill and Ben were right, thought Thomas. Hector is scary and Hector is horrid. Thomas decided to keep away. Thomas spent the morning shunting the other trucks and filling them with coal. All the time, Thomas could feel Hector the Horrid watching him. The plant manager came to see Thomas. We need an extra large delivery, he said, so Rosie is coming to help you. You must shunt and fill Hector, then add him to the back of James's train, he told Thomas. Later, Rosie puffed into the yard. She saw Hector. Do we have to shunt and fill that big truck, Thomas? She asked sweetly. Yes, puffed Thomas, but he doesn't want to be shunted. His name is... Before Thomas could finish, Hector opened his mouth and let out the biggest roar ever. Keep away, he bellowed. Rosie was so surprised that she shook from funnel to footplate and she steamed straight out of the yard. This made Thomas cross. Hector had biffed and bashed Bill and Ben, he had shouted at Thomas and he had frightened Rosie so much that she had puffed away. Now the extra delivery would never be ready. Thomas had had enough. He puffed bravely in front of Hector and gave him a mighty biff. Hector rolled backwards. He was very cross. Keep away, he roared. No, I won't, tooted Thomas crossly. You are causing confusion and delay. You really are horrid. Then with one mighty biff, Thomas sent Hector rolling backwards into a set of buffers. Hector crashed off the track. Thomas felt very bad. He hadn't meant to knock Hector over. Thomas puffed up to Hector. Hector lay on his side, looking very sad. Now Hector didn't seem so horrid. 
I'm sorry I biffed you so hard, wished Thomas. But why don't you want to be shunted? Because I'm scared, moaned Hector. Why? asked Thomas. I'm a new truck, he groaned. And I'm scared because I haven't been filled with coal before. I don't know what it feels like. That's why I didn't want to be shunted. Thomas was surprised. Later, Rocky and the workman arrived and lifted Hector back onto the tracks. Thomas wanted to help Hector. Sometimes I'm scared when I have to do something new, he chuffed. But coal isn't scary. Hector watched as Thomas rolled under the coal hopper. Black, dusty coal poured into Thomas's coal box. When the dust settled, Hector saw that Thomas was smiling. See, it's not scary, tooted Thomas proudly. Now Hector was excited. I'd like to be filled with coal too, he rumbled. We must hurry, puffed Thomas. Thomas pulled Hector quickly under the coal hopper. Hector was quickly filled with coal. It felt wonderful. Then Thomas shunted Hector into place just in time.